We were here before the pilgrims came on the Mayflower. We were here before the first cannons fired in the Revolutionary War. We were here. Some of us were slaves, some of us were free, but we were here. Many of our people fought in the Revolutionary War for issues stated in the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these rights are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Most of our names have been forgotten by now. The majority of us were slaves. We were recognized only as property, not people. We could not write our own names because we didn't know how to write, and it now seems time has forgotten our names. Yes, we have a great history in this country. We have a heroic history of survival. Our history travels the length of a whip and the vastness of a dream. It spans oceans and centuries. It is the history of a human spirit. Search for freedom. It is the history of our souls. We began in Africa. Although most of us did, don't know where our ancestors were when they were kidnapped and brought across the ocean as slaves. These slave ships were overcrowded and our people were abused. It was a terrible sight. John Newton, a slave being business, grew to hate the business. He wrote a song that we still sing today. He wrote Amazing Grace. One stormy night when he thought the ocean would swallow him and his ship full of slaves. The names of the slaves on Miss Newton's ship were African. Most received new names once they got to their destination. Their own children did not have African names. They were raised speaking English. They had names like Frederick or Harriet or Nathaniel. Maybe you've heard of Nathaniel Nat Turner who led his fellow slaves in dangerous and bloody rebellion. I was born the property of Benjamin Turner. I had visions and I saw white spirits and black spirits engaged in battle. The sun was darkened, the thunder rolled in the heavens, blood flowed in the streams. I heard voices say, such is your luck, such you are called to see, and let it come rough or smooth, you must sure bear it. Nate Turner and many other slaves were executed after this rebellion, but many people, black and white, began to listen to the slaves and former slaves. Many people wanted to abolish slavery. They were called abolitionists. One of the most important black men was Frederick Douglass. Like Nat Turner, he was born a slave. He ran away from his master and became a great speaker for the abolitionists. Standing before large audiences like this one, he would tell about his childhood and, the, and about the evil slavery. My mother visited to me where few short and mostly made at night. I will never forget how she looked when I had told her I had no food since morning and that the mistress meant to starve the life out of me. She gave me a, a large ginger cake that showed me that I was somebody's child and somebody loved me. My joy was short-lived. I dropped off to sleep and waked in the morning to find my mother gone. I did not see her after this.
The dark night of slavery fell upon Frederick. He was weary until he felt a resurrection from the dark time of slavery to the heaven of freedom. He was not afraid to die. He had bruises, but this spirit made him a free man. Frederick Douglass sometimes took off his shirt during his speeches and showed the deep whip marks on his back. This made some women in the audience faint. Sometimes a former slave, Sojourner Truth, would join him in speaking about human rights. Ain't I a woman? I have as much muscles as any man and can do as much work as any man. I have ployed and reaped and husked and chopped and mowed. Can't any man do more than that? Another great woman of color did not make many speeches, but she did make many journeys. She ran away to where freedom was, but returned many times to the slave world to rescue other slaves. She took them from one hiding place to another using what was called the Underground Railroad. The Underground rail Railroad was not a real railroad with tracks and trains. It consisted of many safe houses where runaway slaves could stay on their way to freedom. Some call Harriet Thumman the conductor of, of the railroad. Moses, like Moses in the Bible, she led slaves to a promised land. I was only seven years old when I was sent away to take care of a white baby. One morning while I was waiting to take the baby, I got in trouble. I was hungry and I spotted a lump of sugar in a bowl. My missus back was turned, so I grabbed the sugar. She turned to saw me. The next minute she had to ride down. I flew and she didn't catch me. I run and I run and I run. When I was clear, tucked through it out, I come to a pig pen. I stayed there fighting them pigs and eating their scraps. I got so starved, I knew I had to go back to my missus. I didn't have nowhere else to go. But years later, I, I did have somewhere to go. Freedom Land. And I took others with me. You see, there was only one or two things I had the right to do. Liberty or death. If I could not have one, I would have the other. No man should take me alive. You may not know that there were slaves even here in Idaho. When the pioneers came, they brought three colored servants with them in the first company, Hark Lay, Oscar Crosby, and Green Flag. Green Flag was probably driving Brahmo's young wagons. Green was honored years later. There was little girls asking him a question. Mr. Flake, what was it like to be a slave? 
Uh, you don't have to answer that, Mr. Flake. No, I want to answer. Being a slave is all right. If you want to be a slave, that is. Many of us colored folk wanted a better life if we could find one. I was raised a slave and had a master to tell me what to do. He gave me a place to sleep, fed me and clothed me, worked me, and told me what to do each day. Sometimes I got whipped and my master would give me a big kick in the pants if I made a mistake or was lazy. Slavery's been around a long time and the colored folks got sold like they were a horse or cow. They became the owner's property and they worked long and hard for the master. Most don't want to be a slave and be in bondage to other because they can't have their own thoughts and dreams. They can't plan for the future when all decisions get made by somebody else. You see that need of freedom is deep in all of us. We think about it often. Freedom came, but it's not easy. It came with blood. It causes the nation, the silver world, to free its slave. Many of our race fought that war too. After the war, we were free, but we had new challenges. Most who have been slaves still couldn't read or write. We didn't have good schools and we didn't have mo money. Some still farm the grounds they farmed when they were slaves and sold the crops they raised. Others move away to search for a better life some found that better life and some only f found s sorrow and trouble. We knew we needed education. We needed a vision of what we could be, not just the memory of what we have 
had been. There were many who built schools to educate the free slaves and their children. One of the great ones was Booker T. Washington. He found Tuskegee Institute. He said he laid a foundation other could, others could build on. Good people are still working and building to ensure that opportunities for education will be equal for all races and that all races will have have will have equal say in the government. I do not believe that in any state should make a law that permits a ignorant and poverty stick stricken white man to vote and prevents a black man on the same conditions from voting. It will become evident that the white man who begins by cheating on a Negro out of his ballot soon learns to cheat a white man out of his. Booker T. Washington was famous in his day and respected, but full freedom was still a long way off for us. So there came a time when it was necessary to stand up for civil rights, or in one case to refuse to stand up. Meet Rosa Parks. I can clearly remember Decem December 5, 1955. It was one of the most inspiring days of my life. History records this day as the beginning of the modern civil rights moment that transformed America and influenced freedom revolutions around the world. I have been arrested for days earlier in my hometown of Mount Montgomery, Alabama, for refusing to get up and get my seat on city bus to a white man. That was a regular practice at the time. Martin Luther King Jr. said of me and others, when history books are written in the future, somebody will have to say there lived a race of black people, flinty locks and black complexion of uh, people who had the moral courage to stand up for their rights and thereby they injected a new meaning into veins of history and of civilization. These are only a few people from our history. There are so many others now. Poets, musicians, artists, doctors, athletes, politicians, players, professors, meet Barbara, Mellet, Robert F. Smith, Barack Obama, and Al Higgins. Hot people to think character, strength, and honor when they think of me. I have been mayor of East Spencer for five terms, and we have seen tremendous change in the landscape of our town. 
I am a billionaire businessman, synthesis, chemical engineer, and investment banker. I am the founder of Chairman and CEO of Private Equity Firm Vesta Equity Partners. I am one of the richest people in America. I paid all of the students' debt uh, for tw the 2019 graduation cl class at Morris House College. I was born on August 4th, 1961 in Hawaii to my Caucasian mother and Kenyan father. I graduated from an elite academy in Hawaii, went to Occidental College and earned a law degree f from Harvard University. I have served as a writer and editor, community organizer, attorney, attorney and senator, and your 44th U.S. president. I was also awarded a Nobel Peace Prize in 2009. I am a native of Rowan County. I am a wife, mother, grandmother, veteran, small business owner, and a former teacher and a college administrator. In 2017, I became the first African-American woman to be elected to the Salisbury City Council. As top vote getter, I became the mayor of city council. I was born on February 7, 1993, in Salisbury, North Carolina. I attended Rowan Salisbury School, graduated from North Rowan High School, and went on to graduate from South Carolina State University. After graduating, I was drafted by the NFL to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We call ourselves African Americans because we cherish our heritage in its completeness. African and Americans, we, we were here and we still are. Building lives and legacies, perhaps no one helped us realize our worth and our dreams quite like Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I was in Birmingham because injustice was there. I was driven to carry the gospel of freedom beyond my hometown. I cannot sit in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happened in other places. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I have a dream that someday my four little children will be judged by, not by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream today too. I hope each of you has a dream. I hope each of you know that your dreams can come true. So dream high, lift up your head, and dream high, lift every voice and sing.